Sanvatskano. I'm Peter Bittner. You're watching Talk With Me. Sanvatskano. Hello, and welcome to Talk With Me. I'm your host, Peter Bittner. Today's guest is Eni Biambadorj, photographer, designer, and co-founder of the popular cooking app, Gerte. Eni Biambadorj is a videographer, photographer, and entrepreneur based in Ulaanbaatar. She's the co-founder of the well-known how-to cooking app, Gerte. Gerte's viral cooking videos introduce Mongolian audiences to international cuisine and vice versa. Eni studied fine arts at North Seattle College in the United States. When she was younger, Eni was a professional contortionist and performed in the Mongolian National Circus. Now she practices for fun. In addition to Mongolian and English, Eni speaks Japanese and intermediate German. Thanks so much for being on our show today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's wonderful to be here in your home studio mm -hmm. where all the magic happens. <laughs> yes, this is where the magic happens. <laughs> so tell us about Gerte. You know, it's how-to cooking videos that are online, Facebook, mm -hmm. integrated with an app. Tell us about your content exactly. Gerte means at home and uh, we teach DIY home cooking videos and uh, we upload our videos on Facebook mainly and we also have YouTube channel and as you mentioned before we have our application which uh, launched a uh, half year and a half ago. So what are the videos about? What type of recipes do you have? Uh, are mm -hmm. they for yeah, international cuisines, Mongolian cuisines? Mm -hmm. Our videos include uh, Mongolian dishes and also international dishes, especially Japanese dishes which I really love because uh, I have studied in Japan before, in my high school time, and that really influenced to make me to include more Japanese cuisine in our videos too. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So you have over 300,000 Facebook oh, yeah. likes, an active community of people engaging with your recipes. You mm -hmm. post two to three recipes a week roughly, and mm -hmm. uh, you have very nice edited, uh, very tight, short clips that mm -hmm. uh, demonstrate how to cook something from mm -hmm. scratch, which I think is fantastic. Thank so, you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm curious, you know, how did you guys get started? Whose idea was it? Mm -hmm. So, uh, my colleague is my sister-in-law, and we grew up, grew up together. Uh, when I was 14, uh, she really, she made me a really good cuisine and nurtured me like a, my mom. And, uh, and her hobby was to make uh, really good food and she was really in interested in international food and uh, that really inspired me to ask her that if we can make uh, DIY home cooking videos together and that time was uh, 2016 uh, late January and uh, she was uh, nice enough to say yes <laughs> and uh, at, the, at the time, I had uh, no knowledge of taking videos um, and I have started to learn uh, video program edits and now it's growing bigger and bigger. I think my skill is getting better and better. Of course, mm -hmm. yeah. I noticed that just mm -hmm. from looking through your content. So mm -hmm. your background is in photography though and in oh, yeah. design, correct? Yeah, it is. Uh, I had my uh, certificate of fine art degree in North Seattle College. Um, and where I learned photography out there. So that's had a big influence, yeah, on yeah. the whole production as well. And mm -hmm. great. Uh, I kind of saw the similarities between taking videos and taking photos, because um, uh, most of the techniques are kind of similar for elementary or coloring, uh, such as coloring, and then taking, you know, uh, the subjects or objects, the food or the person, I think uh, they're kind of similar to it. So it was uh, kind of fun to take a video at the beginning and the learning new program was also kind of fun too. Of course, I imagine. Mm -hmm. So what was the first video that you posted and what was the uh -huh. reaction on social media? Um, so our first video was uh, Apple Pie, which went viral on Facebook. And uh, at the time, uh, we were thinking about if our likes is going to be around 30,000 in three months. But our likes went viral and uh, we, we had that 30,000 people in a week. 
Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. So that video, how many times was that shared than that apple pie recipe? The last time I checked, uh, I think it was six months ago, I think it was 80,000 mm -hmm. shares and over a million views. Wow. So at the time, uh, our the Mongolian active Facebook members were 600,000. Now it's growing. And I think everybody watched it and everyone tried that recipe in their home. And one funny thing was that uh, one supermarket called us and oh, because of your video, we are out of vanilla sugar. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So mm -hmm. people were not able to buy the ingredients in the uh -huh. recipe because the stores were sold out. Yeah. Wow. So that's a big deal. So mm -hmm. what did you think after that? Um, that really pushed us to make more videos, <laughs> not only Mongolian, but also more international food for sure. Mm -hmm. And so... Tell me about how you guys have grown in terms of production and mm -hmm. uh, what types of recipes that you feature regularly now. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, uh, we produced uh, seven recipes in a week. And wow. yeah, I think that went uh, on for uh, three months. And now uh, the things kind of changed and our videos quality has changed too. So uh, we make uh, three or four videos in a week. And uh, we also launched our application, so I think that really helps uh, other people to learn more about food culture. Right, so tell us about the app. Um, Gitra application, oh, it's a really good application. Mm -hmm. You guys all should download it, and you should download it because it's in English and Great. it's in Mongolian too. And once you go into application, you can look at the recipe uh, photos and uh, you can also add a portion and it automatically changes the calories for you. So uh, which is a really good feature. And um, the, our application has downloaded over 100 and uh, I think it's 150,000 users. Wow. Uh -huh. And one other benefit is that uh, it's free. And once you download it, it, uh, it automatically saves all the recipes. So you can look up in online or either offline. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So you're saying I could learn Mongolian traditional recipes yes. and they're in English. Yes. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And Mongolians can learn international cuisine yeah. through this app and it saves the history of yeah, all the ones they've looked true. up. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Now, now I think it has uh, 200 recipes. So you can just search uh, any type of dishes that you want to make. Wow. Mm -hmm. So how many videos have you made in total since you started in 2016? Um, 2016, I think now it's uh, 400 videos, so 400 recipes. Wow. Yeah, that's tremendous. Mm -hmm. so congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a really remarkable. Mm -hmm. And tell us about, uh, you know, how have things changed over the years in terms of your video shooting and editing style? Mm -hmm. um, editing style has changed a lot uh, because I every time I uh, edit a film or edit a video I think my skills are growing and uh, I think uh, we are going into more a professional way mm -hmm. as compared to in the beginning of course, yeah, the quality is fantastic yeah. at this point, yeah mm -hmm. and uh, you know, what do you hope to do with this how are you yeah, monetizing your audience uh -huh. and yeah, uh -huh. what's your strategy? Do you have a, a long-term plan for developing this as a business? Mm -hmm. uh, now we are mainly focusing on Facebook platform and we are opening our YouTube channel. Um, and also I think we're going to um, make it more tangible. You know, you can such as uh, having our products or opening a restaurant, or in the future maybe having our own food channel would be great too. So uh, it's in our mind. Great. It's, it's gonna be great. So I noticed on some of the videos that I've seen recently that uh, you also have some corporate sponsors mm -hmm. that you've gotten on board. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so tell us about how that began and, and when. Mm -hmm. um, when, I think it was a year ago, they. Uh, connected us to include their products in our videos and there were lots of companies so we need to choose from the best so I, I think we chose the best one and uh, 
uh, not only we make uh, healthy videos, we need to include safe ingredients for our videos. Where do you buy most of your ingredients and how do you select them so that you know they're very high quality? So um, as for the ingredients, it's not like uh, 2000, right? Now it's 2017 and lots of products are imported and we're exporting different uh, products, Mongolian products. and. Uh, I think Mongolia has a really good source of ingredients, but some of them are really pricey for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's collectible. Yeah, mm -hmm. certainly. Mm -hmm. That's great. And uh, in terms of you know some of your favorite recipes that you enjoy making uh, mm -hmm. over the years, what's been near the top of your list? If you had to name one or two of your favorite dishes that you've made here that you would uh -huh. make at home continually mm -hmm. for family or friends. Um, I like. Uh, uh, just for me though, <laughs> uh, I like teriyaki, um, Japanese cuisine, and it's really easy to make. And uh, at the same time, it's kind of healthy. It's not like a full fried uh, recipe. So I think I really liked it and I enjoyed eating at it after the shooting. Of course. Mm -hmm. And so teriyaki, that sounds like uh, a Japanese dish. Did you yeah, mm -hmm. incorporate that uh, as a result of some of your experiences abroad studying? Uh -huh. um, during my high school study, uh, my uh, host family were really into food. They taught me how to make teriyaki and sukiyaki, uh, which is really good food also. Uh, just really good food. And uh, I think that background influenced me to make uh, in to include more Japanese dishes in our videos, and Mongolian food for sure too. Um, and I like desserts. Of course, mm -hmm. I think I everyone loves dessert, right? Sure. <laughs> well, it's no coincidence then mm -hmm. that the first recipe was apple pie. Yeah. <laughs> and t yeah, that's an American dish. You've also studied and spent significant time. Mm -hmm. uh, in the United States. Yes, I did. And I, tell mm -hmm. me about that. It was really good experience for me to have. Um, and I'm also really glad that I've started there. And uh, learning in photography really helped me to become who I am today. And uh, learning English was also kind of hard. Yeah, but how did clearly your English is great so what was your you. strategy uh, how did you first start studying and mm -hmm. you know how did you get to the level where you could apply uh, and get into you know international mm -hmm. university and college mm -hmm. um, so once after I completed my high school in Japan um, I have decided to study in the US and uh, gaining a lot of experience from a different country was really crucial to me, was really crucial to me. And um, once I get there, uh, my Japanese was better than my English. And uh, as far as applying to college, um, I, uh, I had some connection uh, through my uh, acquaintance, my friend, and she told me that you can apply from here and then go study over there. And that was a really good chance for me to go there. And uh, in the first quarter, I went to uh, ESL course, English learning course. And a uh, quarter later, I changed uh, my college, North Seattle College, and uh, where I gave my English test. And uh, fortunately, I passed and I went to a college. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And why did you decide to study photography and design? Uh, I know your background is actually in a different art form oh, entirely. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you should share yeah, some about that too. It's really fascinating. At the age of five, I went to Mongolian National Circus to learn contortion. And I have studied contortion for 10 years. And uh, when the time uh, I decided to go into uh, Get educated, and that's why when uh, that's why I went to Japan and then completed my study. And uh, when I went to US, my major was totally different. It was in IT drawing class, um, and my professor really inspired me, uh, or find found my uh, skill in art area, and she really pushed me into that area. Maybe it's not your major that you love in the future. Why don't you try something uh, more like in the art field? 
and I really enjoyed taking photos at the time and there was a photography certificate class that's when I decided to change my major and I'm glad I did. Clearly it paid off, it was a good yeah. decision. In terms of entrepreneurship, I mean mm -hmm. is this something that at the very beginning you thought would be a business when you began these videos? At the beginning we didn't really think that it will give us that big advantage and we just uh, focused on uh, making cool videos for Mongolians and teach them how to make a healthy dish and delicious dish at the same time. But as your audience grew, mm -hmm. clearly you realized there's some opportunity for making this into a mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. And when did you first realize, you know, hey, we could maybe make some money out of this? I think after one or two months later, when that time uh, some companies started to connect us and at the time I think we realized that we can make uh, advantage of it. So companies were contacting you yeah. and saying hey we'd love to partner with you guys uh -huh. and get our brands out there. Yes they did. What did that feel like? Um, it, it actually felt really good because we were doing the things that we like and uh, people were offering that we can make we can be your sponsors you know and it was it really felt good and uh, i think our hard work paid off at the time yeah it mm -hmm. seems like it and um you have a very strong brand as well and uh, do you have plans to for example i see your mm -hmm. lovely t-shirt there Thank you. You know, <laughs> uh, will that be available eventually you know those mm -hmm. types of products to some of your fans i think in a um uh, that's a good point too, uh, selling them and then um, I think we are going to probably sell it in the future but not right now. Uh, we are giving it away to our active members. Uh, we have also a Girste group on Facebook and there are almost uh, 25,000 people right now on it and uh, we chose uh, active members monthly and gave our uh, branding clothes so it's kind of a, a small club then, or community mm -hmm. based around yes. yeah, your platform. So yeah, tell us a little bit about what the purpose of the group is and mm -hmm. how it's different from people engaging on your normal Facebook page. Uh -huh. So on the uh, Facebook page, we, uh, every day we get lots of messages, how to do it, how to bake this, or if, we don't, if I don't have these ingredients, uh, what should I do next, or something like that. Uh, opening and group uh, group was uh, really good because they uh, our members can talk to each other, not only just see the videos. They can comment on each other and they can learn from their mistakes. Or even uh, if somebody makes a good dish, they can learn by themselves. So it was really it is really good opportunity to make uh, uh, Mongolians, especially all amateurs to develop a uh, food culture mm. at their home. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, who, yeah, is the average user or fan, you know, of your uh -huh. videos then? Um, I think it's from age 20 to 40, mostly women. Um, almost 87% of them are women, of them are women. And, uh, there are men too, for sure, and they are really interested and they are really talented and the number is growing. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. That's great. And uh, where do you hope to be in a year or two with Gerte? What's your vision? What's your dream? Mm -hmm. um, I think I, I would say our dream is to have our own product um, and probably opening a restaurant too. Really? Yeah. Mm. Let's see how it's going to go. Okay. I'll definitely line up outside mm -hmm. when you open. Yeah. <laughs> come, come. No doubt. Will that apple pie be on the menu? I think so. For sure. <laughs> that, that is our the first video. So Great. I think, yeah. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. uh, lovely. So can we cook something now? Can I see kind of how the process works mm -hmm. here in your kitchen? Yeah, for sure. Today I prepared to make oatmeal cookies. I hope you're going to enjoy it. 
I would love to see that. Yeah, my mother used to make oatmeal cookies uh, cool, when I was man. very young, so it's one of my favorites. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. I can't wait. Tell me, what are we making here? So we have a few ingredients out. These look delicious. Is this an oatmeal cookie? Yes, it is. Okay. That's the final result. Final result, okay. You need to make make it to look like this. <laughs> okay. It better look like this. Yeah. All right. Mine may not be as beautiful, but uh, tell us, what are the ingredients we have here? Okay. So ingredients are um, oats and an egg and brown sugar, flour and butter, uh, melted butter and vanilla sugar. It's, a, it's also on our application, so you can look out the ingredients later for the exact measurement. Great. Okay. Fantastic. And so I noticed you use uh, it, these don't look like raisins. You said they're... Oh, cranberries. Cranberries, okay. Uh -huh. So why cranberries instead of raisins? Um, I like cranberries more than raisins. Yeah. It's sweeter, so that's sweeter? why I chose it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Appropriate for a cookie. Mm -hmm. Great, great. So what's the first step? Okay, um, so you can measure the oats okay. into 100 grams. 200 grams, okay. No, 100 grams. 100, all mm -hmm. right. Let's see how we do here. 15. Oh, be careful. <laughs> yeah. 100. 90. Oh, okay. 102. That's Is fine. That too that's much? fine. No, that's Hang fine. On. Yeah. Pinch. There oh, it's actually go. going up. It went up. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Okay. okay. Close Oops. enough. Close, yeah, close enough. enough. Great. Okay. And then um, you can combine all the ingredients. Okay. So they all go in. Yeah. Does all the order in. matter? No, no. Not really. Order doesn't matter? No. Okay. So let's see here, let's see if I can do this. Okay, let's see. How are we doing? Wait, is it rich enough? Oh, the sugar needs to be more combined with mm -hmm. the eggs and stuff, so you can smash it like that. Try one more time. I think you're doing great. Doing great? Yeah. All right. Do you guys offer cooking classes yeah, yet? Like this. Yeah. Oh, like this more? Okay. Oh, yeah, we used to, uh, we still do really? offer a class when we have time. Uh huh. Great. And it's mm -hmm. part of the Gerte website as well. People can sign up then or? Um, no, we, are, we usually put our poster on our group or on Facebook page. Got it. And people will just call me and then submit there. Great. Are they private Same lessons, stuff. group lessons? Um, usually there are six people. Great. And uh, the cool thing is that everybody can use their own um, not own, like our utilities to make the food. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a hands-on uh, course, which is really good. So Wonderful. you will fry by yourself. Uh -huh. You will combine all the ingredients by mm -hmm. yourselves. Not just look at them, but try by right. your hands. Right. So. And does that happen here in this lovely kitchen, or do you do it elsewhere? Um, it depends, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> but not here. Got it. or two or what do you um, think? Probably two spoons. Okay. Yeah. Let's try one of those. Let's try two and let's see how, it, how the color goes. Because <laughs> the color is the most important thing for the color. For, for me. Ah, for, I for see. Me. It's all about presentation. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, does the visual aspect overtake mm -hmm. the uh, flavor at times when you're making these videos? You know? Uh -huh. um, the dish. The, all of these dishes should or must look delicious. Uh -huh. Otherwise, people won't really cook it. And right. especially Mongolians are really into meaty food. Meaty food, yeah. yeah. I've noticed, yeah, yeah. definitely. And they uh, always ask some like healthy foods and vegan foods. Mm -hmm. And uh, that videos don't go well as compared to meaty foods. <laughs> okay, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the most popular uh, meat dish? Um, it's uh, fried mutton ribs. Ooh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it is. Nice. And my sister came with the idea of that and it went viral, which, really, which was really good. Oh, it was her recipe? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. So where do you find most of your recipes? Mm -hmm. Do you make them all or do you research online? or? Mm -hmm. 
um, we searched them online uh -huh. and I uh, come with the idea. Some of the dishes are seasonally, so as for okay. like winter, we tend to include more of a soup video, or in, in the summer, we tend to include more ice cream, like a, or desserts even more. Even Valentine's, we try to right. include more chocolate dishes. Ooh, well, naturally, yeah. So it depends on the uh, season and also months. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, this looks good. Yeah. Let's go to the next step. Okay, what's the next step? Is to get the right shape. So we will need a spoon. I'll take this, not a big one. And then and do like this. Or you can just use your hand, but this way it's easier. Yeah, to get looks the like shape. it. Okay. Like that. Oh, nice. All right. Let me try that. It smells so good, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it. Okay, so looks like this. All right. And uh, in the oven, it's got to be, uh, I think, around 15 min minutes. Okay, 15 at least. minutes. And let's see how it goes. Okay, sounds good. Let's put them in. These look amazing. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. So that didn't take long at all. Yeah, it was 15 minutes. 15 minutes, yeah. And um, it needs to cool down a little bit, okay. but we can taste it for sure. Taste it first? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Mm. That's delicious. It's delicious. Mm. And healthy too. And healthy. Lots of good oats in here, lots of fiber. Mm -hmm. Lots mm -hmm. of fiber. It's a nice balance too. It's not too sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's definitely. Got a lot of nice textures in there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. I'm glad that you liked it. A little chewy, a little crunchy. Huge fan. Man, those were delicious. Thanks so much for showing me. You you're know, welcome. How the whole process works. Mm -hmm. My mother would be proud. Yeah, yeah, your mother will be proud. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So tell me about, you know, how you have a good work-life balance with this entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and all of your, you know, photography, videography. Uh, mm -hmm. What else are you into? As I mentioned earlier, I was a contortionist. And I think I'm myself as a really active person and I train uh, mostly every day as my contortion. You train every day? Uh, not like every day, uh -huh. I took a weekend off and I have started to train uh, my contortion these days. Wow, so what does that involve? How many hours a, a day is that when mm -hmm. you practice? Well, not like all days. All <sighs> days where uh, it was hard, it's it almost every day I trained for four to six hours. But now it's like a more an hour training kind of thing. Wow. And mm -hmm. do you hope to go in, you know, do you hope to go back into the performing arts then? Would you like to mm -hmm. perform as a contortionist down the road again? Mm -hmm. If I had a chance to perform, I think I will. <laughs> How do you maintain a good work-life balance as, uh, you know, a self-starter, mm -hmm. a businesswoman? I have never done this kind of thing without my family member and my friends for sure. And uh, thank you for my family and my friends. And uh, having a good night's sleep is really important. Yeah, and also eating uh, healthy food is important too. And making a good plan for your everyday life, which uh, that really helps. I'm sure. So mm -hmm. what's your routine like then uh, in an average day, for example, when you're producing? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, what does a day look like for mm -hmm. uh, a videographer, entrepreneur, mm -hmm. um, chef? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, as for the producing day, uh, I usually woke up at 10. Not, mm -hmm. I'm not a really morning person. <laughs> um, and uh, I come here and start to shoot our videos until it it gets uh, until it's done so i think it really depends on the food too some dishes can take two or four days some dish can make we can make it in only t 20 minutes so it really depends after we finish our video the best part is we need we have a chance to taste or even <laughs> eat you know we just eat all of it so <laughs> i think that's the best part of our uh, work 
That's true. Yeah, maybe you guys should do a time lapse of all of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, too. Uh, we actually have the mukbang show called Gishtetu, uh, uh, and uh, that's where we eat and talk to our members online. Great. So, yeah. And that's on your Facebook page as well yeah, now. It's on our Facebook. Fantastic. When mm -hmm. did that start? Tell me more about that. Um, it started a year ago. Uh, uh, Tingle, uh, she is an actor, and uh, Michelle, a singer too. Uh, they were the first uh, guests to eat our food afterwards. Great. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you, too. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, congratulations on all your success. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you for having me and having Kirste. Absolutely. That does it for this episode of Talk With Me. That was Eni Biamba Dorge, photographer, designer, and co-founder of Gerte, the popular cooking app. Thank you so much for joining us today. You can connect with us on our Facebook page at Talk With Me Star TV Mongolia. You can also watch this episode and many others on our YouTube channel, which is Star TV HD. Please subscribe. Thank you for your time today. I'm your host, Peter Bittner, and I hope to see you back here next week with the next episode of Talk With Me. Bye, flap, bye, bye.